Hi, I'm Jon Magnusson and I'm a songwriter and musician from Stockholm, Sweden. And you're listening to the Musicality Now podcast. This is Pathways, where we share the stories of real music learners just like you, who are each on their own path of developing their musicality and discovering their true potential as musicians. Hi, my name is Christopher. I'm the founder and director of Musical You, and welcome to Musicality Now. Today I'm joined by John Magnusson, a songwriter and multi-instrumentalist from Sweden, as part of our Pathways series, where we share the stories of music learners on their journeys of musicality to inspire you in your own. Jon has done what I know many in our audience dream of, made music his full-time profession. And he's done so as someone who is already an adult and a father, not a young graduate with nothing to lose. Life circumstances came together to provide a way to let the side income he had from music projects cover his living costs and let him pursue music full time. And for the last several months, he's been setting himself up and pursuing new learning to reach an end goal he describes as full creative freedom to pursue whatever music projects he wants to while making a living with it. In this conversation, we talk about why even though he felt like a talented musician growing up, when the time came to pursue music full time, he sought out new training in two key areas. We talk about how he's combining the roles of modern day A&R rep with his own music making and how each helps the other. And we discuss the most challenging thing so far about making music his full-time gig and what's been helping him to manage that. Plus, you get to hear me pronounce Jorn's name about 17 different ways in my attempt to get the Swedish pronunciation right. If you're already neck deep in learning about how to make a living with music online, then you've probably already found David Andrew Weeb's New Music Entrepreneur, or Brent Bartstra's Passive Income Musician podcasts, or indeed the Indopreneur community that Jon himself has found so useful. And you've probably listened to plenty of interviews with up-and-coming independent musicians. But if not, then this whole world may be new to you, and there's a lot to it which may surprise and inspire you. And I was particularly eager to ask Jon not just about the business side, but about the musicality side of things too how he's developing himself as a musician to make sure his music is the best it can be. I hope you'll enjoy this Pathways interview. And remember, if you've had breakthroughs, large or small, that you'd like to share with other music learners, we would love to share your story here on the show. Drop an email to hello at musicalitynow.com and put Pathways in the subject line. My name is Christopher Sutton, and this is Musicality Now from Musical You. Welcome to the show, John. Thank you for joining us today. Thank you very much, Christopher. It's an honor to be here. So I've been really enjoying following along a bit with your story inside your progress journal at Musical U, and I'm really keen now to share some of that with our audience because you've done something that I'm sure a lot of our listeners and viewers only dream of, which is to make music your full-time gig. And before we dive into that, I want to know how you got to that point. What's the backstory of you and Magnuson as a musician? Where did you learn music? What did it look like for you? Uh, I actually started when I was really small, like eight, nine years old uh, in the Swedish musical school. Like we have a more or less free music education uh, run by the municipalities of, of Sweden. So uh, there I started to play the keyboard. Uh, and from the beginning, I really felt I was pretty talented, but, but I was also kind of of lazy so if uh, something didn't go my way i i tended to stop uh, progressing and and just keeping on the level where i was at at the moment and i didn't really have someone who could um, uh, who could really push me to to take the the next step but i began to play guitar at 14 and was totally self taught um, up until uh, like 30 years old, I just played by myself, learning chords. So my progress was a bit slow, but uh, at that moment, I realized how much I really enjoyed making music. And uh, I also went through a pretty rough period in my life. So it's also got me uh, thinking, what do I want to do with my, uh, with my time? So. That's roughly three years ago when I decided that I wanted to make it my full-time job. And at that moment, I didn't have any idea how to, to make it, but I understood that I couldn't uh, 
just rely on what kind of talent I had. So I really started learning like uh, music theory, uh, learning to play guitar more, more um, in a more structured way uh, with internet courses. Uh, and also learning social media, how to build a website, or the business side uh, around things. So it took me roughly two and a half years to go from from making a big loss, uh, spending a lot of money to actually break break even. And in August, I I was at a point in life where I could take it full time. Awesome. Well, there is so much there that I want to unpack with you. And yeah. let's let's begin in that early stage, because I think it's I think it's interesting that you said you were kind of provided with this standard music education, but you also self-taught yourself guitar. So could you talk a yeah. bit about what that kind of official music education looked like? What were they teaching? What weren't they teaching? And then when it came to guitar, how did you go about learning to play guitar yourself? Um, yeah, the mu municipality music education is like every kid has the possibility to choose an instrument and play in an orchestra. So it's pretty based on on an orchestral setting. Um, so there isn't that much focus on on uh, like writing music or or music theory, mostly about how an orchestra works and playing together with uh, with others. And since I wanted to play keyboard, it wasn't very easy for me to, to be able to play with, with the orchestra or band all the times, especially like if it was a marching band, I was the one bearing the, the banner <laughs> instead of <laughs> playing an instrument. Uh, but I think that was a really good foundation and uh, a great way to, to make kids interested in music. Uh, but I would have wanted a, uh, like for me and others who are more interested in music to be able to take take it maybe a, a step further but um, all in all it was like the most important thing for me because my my parents didn't play music uh, even though they always been very supportive uh, they didn't come from a musical background themselves gotcha and you you said right from the beginning you felt quite talented in music what did that mean what made you feel like, okay, this is for me? Um, like I felt when I heard a song, I could more or less uh, play it, uh, not right away, but and not not like I had a, a perfect pitch, but I had a pretty good sense of pitch and, and musicality right at the beginning. So um, I was able to play like easier pop songs and stuff like that pretty pretty fast. Great. And so then when you decided to add guitar to your arsenal, how did you go about picking up that instrument? Actually, it was uh, I was doing a confirmation. I don't know the name in English. It's like when you're doing uh, in the in the Swedish church. I had a friend who wanted me to, to join him in, even though I'm not religious myself. Uh, the church has a really nice um, like social program for for kids. Where you can do different activities and I choose to, to play guitar. So I, I took five or six lessons uh, through that and my parents bought me an acoustic guitar and, and that's how I started playing the, the guitar. Cool and then a couple of decades passed I guess, one or two anyway, and what were you doing over that period? Were you performing? Were you writing music? Were you just playing for yourself at home? What did your musical life look like? I mostly played at home and also really enjoyed writing songs. And I had a few songs that has gotten a bit of recognition amongst my friends and family. Um, also got a few radio plays uh, in, in other countries. Uh, so I felt that, that I, I had some kind of potential, but at the same time, it took, could take me one year to write a new song because I had to rely on inspiration and <laughs> it wasn't always the inspiration came that easy. So, so I wrote about one song a year and, and recorded and released it, but uh, I didn't really make much progress at, at that time. And you released an EP over that period, is that right? This is all it takes? Uh, no, that one is is actually my uh, my latest. I released a few singles and also an EP in Swedish uh, that I actually taken down from Spotify and, and um, 
because I don't think the quality is, is really good enough. So I use it like bonus content for my, for my mailing list subscribers and stuff like that. Um, but actually the first EP I released that was more or less professionally uh, recorded and, and produced was uh, the song for Sinners EP that I released in uh, almost, almost three years ago, I think in March 2017. Gotcha. And let's go back to that period, if we may, because I think that's when you said you were kind of making this decision to pursue music more fully. And it sounds like you've been really smart about that, if I may say, in the sense that I think a lot of people with the backstory we just described would have been like, OK, I'm going to do music. I'll just kind of rely on my talent and I'll figure it out as I go and I'll jumble together uh, a living from doing this, that and the other and I'll hope that my talent is good enough to carry me through. And clearly that's not the route you've taken. Clearly you, you had that kind of strong start in the sense of feeling that connection to music and having a good ear. But when it came time to pursue it more fully, you've been very thoughtful and deliberate and specific about how to make it work. So could you take us back to that time when you were making that decision? What prompted it and how did you both emotionally and kind of intellectually decide to go about it um that was uh, just before i was writing the the ep i was talking about and i had like one or two songs finished and and i felt like well this is okay but if i want to make it uh, good enough for others to listen to i i actually have to to make it uh, better so uh so i actually started like how can i can I, uh, because I didn't have money to go to a professional school, so I started researching on the internet. Because I think the biggest problem is like you can find so much stuff on YouTube or uh, on podcasts, but if you don't have a, a plan or a, a road to take, like I can watch Adam Neely's videos or Rick Beato's videos, and it's great inspiration, but it's also kind of on, a, on a, a level that's too high for most people in my position. So I really need to have some kind of a basic foundation to, 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 um, to be able to use those more advanced videos as well. And um, so I actually started on Udemy, which is, which is a, a site with a lot of good online courses. And I started with a musical theory course there and also a guitar course. Gotcha. I, I'm always impressed when I talk to people who have a mixture of humility and ambition. You know, <laughs> clearly you wanted to make it in music in some way, shape or form, but you weren't falling into the trap of being like, I'm so great, therefore I'll make it. You were recognizing that there were areas where you needed to improve and you were being humble enough to go to Udemy, seek out the resources and improve your skills to be yeah. able to make that happen. And I think it's a, a combination that often leads to great success. But it does take humility, I think, to say, okay, my theory isn't that great. And rather than saying, I'll just make up for it with creativity, I'm gonna go learn the theory. Yeah, it was like when I started taking music theory, I, I, I've been playing uh, instruments for 15 or 17 years, and I never heard the, the, the concept of musical intervals. It was just, what is that? I, I could read notes uh, or, or sheet music pretty well, but I had no idea what a perfect fourth was. Uh, so that was quite mind blowing to, ah, this is why this song of mine works. Uh, like with uh, cadences, uh, like when I was writing music, I was doing a lot of that stuff, but I had no idea why, why it worked. And it took me so long to, to uh, having to uh, listen to what sounded right instead of having that theoretical knowledge that would have s have made it a lot more faster. Gotcha. Yeah, and I think I think looking at your story from the outside, it seems like at that moment where you were deciding to try and make it a full time living, you would have needed to skill up in your musicality, like your inner skills and yeah. the music entrepreneurship side of things. Yeah. And I guess probably a third area would just be the emotional resilience and the personal development it takes to take full responsibility for your living. You know, that's something that I think a lot of entrepreneurs 
at the early stages don't anticipate that no. it's a very different thing in terms of identity and emotion to go out there in the world kind of all by yourself versus having a nine to five job that provides you a paycheck each month. Yeah. yeah. So <clears throat> I think we kind of touched on the first one there. You were studying some music theory and maybe we'll circle back and talk a bit more about that side of things. But first, how were you thinking about entrepreneurship or the personal development or responsibility? Was that stuff that you thought would come easily? Was it part of your background? Was it slightly intimidating to you? How were you thinking about those two areas? Uh, three years ago, I had no idea that I uh, had to become an entrepreneur as well. That took me maybe one, one and a half year more to, to really realize um, I, I think I had the same same uh, idealistic view that most people do, that if I become good enough and get in front of enough people, someone will recognize me and give me a great record deal. <laughs> but it, like it took me one year to realize that that wasn't going to, to happen. Like it still happens for some people, but it's it's uh, very very rare nowadays that someone get discovered in that in that way and also if you get discovered and don't have any idea on on how things work uh, you are in a pretty pretty bad negotiation uh, position so yeah so no i i didn't have any entrepreneurial uh, ideas at all when i when i got started and what did you do about that once it kind of dawned on you that you needed to learn those skills? Were there particular resources or teachers you went to that helped you skill up in that side of things? Yes, I actually stumbled over. It's a bit more than a year ago. I stumbled over Indopreneur, who teaches uh, like marketing skills and, uh, and stuff for, for uh, uh, it's in um, uh, the audience is, is mainly uh, music artists but also like digital creatives and they teach everything from from email marketing to to uh, running ads and and they have like a system the the foundation of it is is a system where you take someone who had never heard of you from getting that first touch when they hear, hear your music from the first time uh, to becoming a subscriber of your mailing list to actually buying one of your cds or t-shirts so they have a really solid system and then you can take different trainings uh, that it's all relates to that basic system so that that has been uh, probably the most important thing to to uh, to get me to the level to actually make money from from what i'm doing fantastic that was indiepreneur is that it yes Great I work. can't I can't recommend it enough. Cool. We'll definitely have a link to that in the show notes. And so that helped fill in that side of things a bit. Tell us more about that period from, say, three years ago to a few months ago. I guess it was the summer this year, right, when you were fully full time with it. Yeah, um, I actually had a pretty great job as a as a social worker. I was a, a group leader uh, in in the Swedish social care uh, social security system. So I had a pretty good paycheck that uh, that paid for all my plugins and instruments and <laughs> and computers. Uh, but I actually. I did like the job, but I also felt uh, I didn't develop as much as I would have wanted. And I felt I didn't want to become uh, like the only career step for me to take was to become uh, a boss on a higher level. And that felt didn't feel uh, uh, intriguing at all. So, so I started to build in my music uh, uh, on the side. So from doing a lot of different stuff like uh, uh, learning Spanish or reading a lot of books, like everything I did in my free time was relating to my to my music, uh, either by writing music or playing guitar or or um, communicating with radio people, with bloggers, or uh, getting building my fan base. So uh, I spent more or less all my free time uh, the last three years on on building my music business on the side. Well, you say pretty much all your free time, but I'm sure there are people in the audience who are like, oh, that sounds great, but I have a kid, so I couldn't do that. <laughs> yeah, um, yeah, 
I, I realized that and it was uh, when my kid was smaller it was a lot easier because she was totally fine with me playing guitar for her or singing with her or or having her sleeping on my uh, I had a how do you call it like you, you bear her in a in some kind of uh, a sling yeah sling uh, and i could and i could sit at the computer working and that worked until she was like eight nine months uh, old and then i went on parental leave so i had to slow things down <laughs> pretty uh, pretty much uh, uh, a lot i had to uh, so when my wife came home from work i had a few hours to to get some work done but um yeah i had to to uh, to prioritize my <laughs> my kid at that time of course and so was it kind of a hard flip then from being employed to being a full-time music maker or did you gradually transition from one to the other um actually my my parental leave came in very handy and also uh, i had a bit of a, a um, struggle with my my old with my boss at my old work and he he did some stupid things that that ended up with them having to pay me a settlement how do you call it um, settlement payment Severance. yeah exactly um so that actually helped um a bit as well because i was able to have a a bit of money saved um to to really invest in in my business and then i went on parental leave so the transition wasn't that that hard really it was like uh, instead of being home with my my kid i was being home with my music and <laughs> so so that was kind of a of a good timing with everything terrific and if you don't mind me asking at that stage did you have some revenue from the music side of things or were you starting from zero at that point um more or less from i i was starting to break even uh, and and actually that was when i started to because i didn't have much time uh playing or 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 uh, working actively i started to curate playlists because i always had a, a great interest in 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 music so actually my playlists uh, are bringing in enough money to to pay the bills and to to build my own music more more uh, like i don't have to rush things or i don't have to sell a lot of things to my to my uh, fan base because i have the my music creation that's that's uh, a good foundation interesting so for anyone watching or listening who's never come across that idea of making money from creating playlists before how does that work it's um like i'm building playlist i i actually i wouldn't recommend it to 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 uh, everyone because it's it's a lot more work than than you can imagine so i spend like two three hours of the day uh, listening to new music and and arranging playlists to work uh, so like the the trick is to to have enough famous artists on the list blended with new and and unknown artists to make people interested in following the playlist but not getting bored uh, so i try to keep it like 50 50 between famous artists and, and unknown artists and then i have promoted them on social media and especially my jazz playlists and progressive rock playlists has gotten quite a lot of of followers who are actively listening to the playlists uh, and then I use uh, Submit Hub, uh, which is a site where artists can can submit music for consideration, um, and it's also very transparent. Like uh, I really try to to listen to a lot more than you have to 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 earn uh, earn money. So so I got a quite a high rating. So I get a lot of songs sent to me. Uh, daily so it's a lot of work but it's also really fun because i get to listen to a variety of music i don't think uh, most people come close to and where does the money come from from the the artist pays a fee for submitting to and that i get a part of the of the fee and the, and the submit hub uh, gets a part of the fee as well for for uh, providing the service gotcha Interesting. And the playlists would be on Spotify or YouTube? Or... Yeah, Spotify for, in my case. Mm -hmm. 
Fascinating. I think that's such a beautiful example of how there are so many more opportunities these days to make music pay for you, or rather to make money with music, aside from the traditional, I have made a song, I will sell it to people on a tape or a CD or whatever the case may be. Um, it's really inspiring, I think, to realize the possibilities. Yeah, and I think a lot of people is uh, is using Spotify playlists as a fast way of of earning money from from starving artists. But since I'm an artist myself, I know how important it is to actually getting value. If someone spends three dollars for sending me a song, and I don't give a crap, I think that's um, uh, I know I know there are people who who just use it to to. Uh, make a quick buck but i really try to if i don't accept the song i really try to to write good feedback uh, especially if i hear some potential but i it's not totally right for my playlist i really try to express that in my my reviews and i think that's why it has become so sustainable because i'm uh, and also i'm not uh, promoting my playlists to to countries where there are a lot of of fake listeners um, because there are a lot of playlists who has a fake following uh, with with people who aren't real people or who are um, more or less bots or click farms. And I think Spotify is, is getting better and better at, at sorting those accounts out. So people who, are, who has been relying on fake plays are, I think they're going down pretty soon. So and that's um, since I'm an artist myself, I have some kind of of ethics uh, with me in in my curation. I see. It's kind of the modern day version of an A and R rep being a musician themselves. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> You're getting exactly. to play both parts. Yeah, and I, I for me that that has been perfect because I can also use like listening to a song and, and figuring out the chord progression and really like determine what is my taste. Why does some kind of music uh, uh, makes me so so intrigued, but some kind of music just doesn't work for me? Um, so it also has been a way of me evolving as a musician and a music consumer as well. And so you got to the point where this could be your all day, every day, apart from you know also being a dad and I'm sure yeah. other responsibilities, but <laughs> yeah. music could be your main thing. And clearly you had some training from the Indiepreneur site and I'm sure other resources to help you make sure the bills were more or less being paid and give you some freedom to explore what you wanted to do next. What have been the most important areas to work on since then? What have you been spending your days on to increase the chances of having the kind of success you want? Uh, I have tried to have like a 50-50 balance between uh, actually making music and musical training and 50% the more business side of things, creating playlists and building my, my social media. But actually, the first few months I've been been focusing more on, on getting everything set up, like my mailing list, my website. Uh, so when, I, my, when I'm able to record more music and, and release more music, I already had the business side of things set up. Um, so actually now I'm coming to that that place when I can really focus even more on on uh, on uh, making music. But at the same time, I've been using a lot of my spare time to do air training, like when I'm walking from uh, after uh, leaving my kid at at preschool. I've been listening to chord inversion training or or whatever. So really been. Uh, been using the time I have to to focus on on air training and air training is quite easy to do as soon as you have some time it's it's harder to pick up the guitar and play if my kids asleep but I can always lie in bed and do some some air training so uh, that's the stuff I've been focusing on the last uh, few months like the business sites and my ecosystem and then uh, air training and you've been quite diligent about planning out your day. I remember one of your PJ posts, you were kind of laying out your schedule for the day in terms of what you'd work on when. Could you talk a little bit about that? Because yeah. I'm, I'm remembering <laughs> back when I, you know, first, in fact, for me, I started working from home with my day job before I did my own thing. 
and it was really a learning experience to realize, okay, I've got a blank day. How do I fill yeah. this time? And how do I not just wander off and do something else? Yeah. And that's like, I, I almost never follow my, my schedule, but by having a schedule, I at least have an idea of, of the things I have to do. Like um, I have to, to listen to all the songs that are sent to me and, uh, and review them because uh, that's that's the biggest part of me getting paid at the moment and uh, then i have other things that is good if i if it's good if i i follow up on social media uh, and uh, and so i like it's some kind of of a priority list um, but most often i don't don't follow the schedule but it's having the schedule keeps me at least somehow in in uh, in the right direction and if we come back to the music training you've mentioned music theory and you talked a bit there about chord progression or chord inversion ear training what have been the main areas you've been trying to improve there given that you're a songwriter as well as a multi-instrumentalist how have you decided what to focus on in your musicality training um, i actually been using the uh, the musical you roadmaps they have been really helpful. Uh, like I was talking about earlier, it's so easy like to start, oh, I'm, I'm going to learn the chord inversions. And you just start with an app and you realize I can't recognize any inversions at all. And you're getting a bit, a bit uh, unmotivated. But instead, starting from, from, uh, from the beginning, even if I had a basic knowledge, it's really good to, to get that foundation that you can get from a, from a roadmap. Um, so I actually been using that a lot. Um, so I started with intervals and then went over to, to doing melodies and I actually been doing melodies and chords um, at the same time because they uh, complement each other uh, very well and also the rhythmic training has been been great because that has been kind of a weakness um, uh, and it's quite mind-blowing to see how how little things has to do with with uh, like inherent musicality uh, like just learning to speak rhythms has make it so much easier to to figure out the rhythm of, of a strumming pattern or or whatever um, so uh, and you're talking there about using rhythm syllables right like key yeah ticka -dee -dee. yeah exactly or mm -hmm. one one and two and three and four and gotcha uh, yeah so uh, and how uh, how everything uh, kind of, of goes together like if i'm reviewing a song i can i can hear oh this is the chord progression or oh, this is a bit too standard for me then i can can say that i like the production but it, the chord progression is a bit too standard to really stand out so i can really use what i learn uh, with ear training in in other parts of my of my music business so i actually forgot what the original question was <laughs> I'm just curious to know what you're working on in that area, and I'd love to ask the follow-up, which is, what's this all leading to? I maybe should have asked that question at the start, but what's your vision? Like, now that you're going full-time with it, how do you imagine things being five years from now, if things go perfectly? Um, oh, that's a really good question. I actually, the playlist part, I didn't, I had no idea that I would uh, think that was so so fun and also so making it possible for me to actually make a living from from music uh, but in five years time I hope I I'm at a point where I make a, a, a pretty good living from music so I can be be able to like jump on all the projects I, I feel like like I don't have to to answer to anyone like you can't do this and that um so uh, like full creative freedom is the <laughs> is the five year plan terrific and what's been the most challenging part for you so far whether on the music side or the entrepreneurship side if we think just about the last few months when you've been full time with it are there any challenges you hadn't anticipated um it's like when when person life catch catches up with you to still keep that that um, routine and um, uh, like last month, I've been really tired, but 
then it, then it has really helped that I build up all the routines. I, I have a system to review songs and follow up on my social media. Uh, so I think that's really important. It's quite easy when, when it's uh, summer and everything is light and, uh, and it doesn't take 20 minutes to get your kid dressed for preschool. Then life is <laughs> quite easy, but some days it's not like that then it's really, really valuable to, to have a, a solid system to, to keep you on your, on your feet. Um, so, so I'm really happy that I, I spent the f first months really building up a, a system which making it a lot easier to, to um, keep going even if I don't really have the energy all of the days. Um, so, um, uh, yeah. The, that is the most struggling part, but it's like things things are going according to plan so far. Good. And tell me if you imagine someone watching or listening is, say, six months behind you and really wanting to go full time with music, but maybe they're nervous, they're not sure how to do it, they don't know where to learn about what they need to learn. What tips or advice or resources would you recommend for someone in that place? Um, I would really like my my five year plan three years ago was that at this point I was going to work uh, half time with music and thanks to my severance package and and the playlist I'm able to do it full time already but like building things slow um, and uh, really building up like an ecosystem like how are you going to take how are you going to make people hear your music and how are you going to keep in touch with them and uh, what parts of the business stuff because all the business stuff isn't that fun i have to be honest but what things are fun um, to find out what's what's actually working for for you and really getting that that system in place that uh, the entrepreneur teaches has been really valuable for uh, for me so i can't recommend that enough um, but also don't forget what it's what makes everything fun like that's what i try to do at least one or two hours of of uh, ear training or, or instrument practice every day to to um because that's the most important stuff that what makes me want to do this uh, so it's finding a balance and 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 building things slowly and don't don't think that things will happen overnight gotcha and i i was going to wrap things up there but i want to ask one more question based on what you just said which is have you managed to find communities or connections that help you? I know you're part of Musical You, obviously, but I'm thinking more about the entrepreneurship side or the um, the business side of things. Have you been able to find support and guidance as you need it? Yeah. Uh, also, uh, through Entrepreneur, they have a Facebook group that's really supportive. And I also have, for my instrumental stuff, I have a lot of contacts. We're helping each other building uh, our playlists and, and getting playlist placements for our, our music. Um, so I have a pretty good network. And also, I was running a, a network of independent artists like one year ago, but it's, it became too much. So I had to, to drop it. But I still keep in touch with a lot of people from from there so I, I i got to know so many people thanks to to the music uh, so I, I, even if it's if it's a lot of of work alone it's it's also a lot of social contact terrific i think that's uh, for me certainly it's such an important part of things to know that you're not just by yourself in yeah. isolation yeah <laughs> that you have other people you can you can commiserate with and support each other through yeah. that journey so we talked a little bit about your singles and EPs and your most recent one, This Is All It Takes. Would you let the listeners, the audience know a bit more about your current musical projects and if they want to hear Jon Magnusson's music, where can they go? Yeah, like I said before, I started out making most uh, mostly like folk rock and indie rock stuff. Um, so that can be found under my own name, Jon Magnusson. But also the last few years, I started making more instrumental stuff like jazz and a bit of progressive rock, psychedelic rock. Uh, so actually the last release I did was yesterday when I, I released a jazz piano piece with, uh, that I wrote, but it's arranged and played by an Italian jazz pianist. So that one I'm really happy with. 
So I actually have three main projects with this U Magnuson that is the most, uh, um, which is mostly in the folk and, and rock. And then I have Beyond the Seasons, uh, which is more jazz and progressive rock. Uh, and then also my piano stuff that's under the name of Georg Nilsson. But I, I have links to all the other projects on my on my website if anyone's interested in checking it out. Fantastic, cool. And for anyone who is not as au fait with spe- Swedish pronunciation as <laughs> you are, John, and I, I mangled your name when we first started talking today and called you John. Um, for anyone who doesn't know how to spell these names, you can head to J O N John Magnusson M A G N U S S O N dot S E. That's the main website, and we'll have a link in the show notes, of course. And Jorn, I apologize for calling you John at the beginning of this conversation and was spelling out that domain name, but. Um, yeah, sadly, I think most of our audience would not know how to spell that, including yeah. myself. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so that's the link. Definitely check it out. I, I really have enjoyed diving into your website myself and um, listening to some of your music. And what's coming up for you in the next few months in terms of your learning, your training and your releases? Uh, well, uh, I never know what, what will happen. But on next Monday, I'm releasing a, a jazz tune with my Beyond the Seasons project. Uh, that's actually arranged and played by another Italian jazz pianist. Uh, so I'm really excited for that as well. Uh, that's actually quite mind-blowing that I have professional pianists that wants to arrange and record my stuff that I've written. Uh, and then I actually, I don't know, I think I will take some training in, in mixing to be able to to record more at home and put out more instrumental uh, music from from my home studio and maybe later next year I will will start working on a on a new U Magnuson EP with more indie folk and and rock stuff terrific great and one thing I just realized we haven't mentioned is you are a podcaster yourself and everyone watching or listening to this should definitely check out your own podcast that's available in audio and video format and you can find that also on Jon's website which we'll have a link to in the show notes Huge thank you for joining us today, John, and sharing this journey. It's been such an interesting one to hear about, both before this call inside Musical You and in the conversation today. And I know it's one that's going to inspire and hopefully encourage a lot of people in the audience who've considered taking that leap themselves. Any parting pieces of guidance or wisdom to share with the audience? I think the important thing is to to find what, what you enjoy yourself and also uh, decide if you want to it's totally okay to, to keep it at a hobby level because it's, it is a lot of work if you want to uh, make it as a professional. But also if you choose to make it as a professional, that's, that's nowadays you can really go the independent way. Fantastic. Thank you so much again, Joan. Yeah, thank you. I really enjoyed it. Oh, hey, one more thing. If you enjoyed this video, please take a second to like it on YouTube. And if you haven't already, please also subscribe to our channel there. That's going to help make sure you get all our latest videos as soon as they come out. And it also helps us reach more people, which means more episodes, better guests, and everybody wins. So please take a second to like this video and hit subscribe.